welcome back, everybody, to the newest episode of thepenpodcast.com. I'm your host, Matthew Harms, founder of Pen for Hire, where we offer premier ghostwriting and author coaching services. Also, the creators of the Pen Podcast, where we sit with authors, writers, writing industry professionals, subject matter experts, and all around interesting people. Uh, this is our second edition of You Getting Me by Myself talking about interesting writing topics that our viewers have um, left comments about. So today we're in the fiction realm. This isn't uh, really quite as pertinent for nonfiction, unless maybe you're writing a fable or a parable, but we've gotten some inquiries on how to create interesting characters for your fiction novels. Um, and it's a great question because plot is really only part of what makes a book great. The greatest, most interesting story in the world with all the twists and turns and the big gotcha at the end really falls flat if there's not characters that your readers can get behind. Um, and I don't just mean get behind in a positive way. Characters that invoke negative emotion are also really, really important. So if your reader finishes a book and says, I couldn't stand that person, or I'm so happy they got killed off at the end, you did a good job as a reader. Um, and that doesn't just happen. You've really got to give some thought to your characters before you even start writing. Too much emphasis is put on outlining. Um, if you're a planner, you know, if you're a pantser, you might just sit down and start writing and that's okay. Uh, but at some point, you're gonna have to think about the characters in your book, right? How many are they? Um, who's playing what role? And who are you gonna model them after? Do you have a persona completely created in your head? Um, or are you modeling this off of somebody else? So the first thing I'm here to tell you is that it is perfectly okay to base your characters on real people, um, especially people you know. I've done it myself. In fact, plenty of people have asked me in my first novel should have known which character was based on me because there, anyone who knew me well knew there was some traits um, in both of them. So the, the, the real answer there was they were actually both based on me. I kind of split my personality as a Gemini. Um, I embraced that and took part of my traits, put them into one character, part into the other. And then the rest of their mannerisms uh, were really just kind of pulled together from a persona I had envisioned for each of the characters. So you can base your characters on yourself. And the best part is, depending what personality traits, what situations you're putting them in, you can have five or six different characters in different books. I wouldn't recommend maybe doing more than two in one book. Um, that was a struggle even for me. But you can absolutely turn your own persona into five or six different characters, depending the angles you play in. Um, you can also do this with people, you know, um, in fact, I highly recommend doing this in a way where you're combining traits. So someone, you know, doesn't read your book and say, well, wow, that, that character sounds like me. Um, I knew someone one time who wrote me into one of their novels and made me a bedwetter. Um, so yeah, use my same last name and everything wasn't too hard to tell. Um, I mean, I have a sense of humor, so I laughed about it. But that may not be the best way to get your friends and family supporting your work is to negatively portray them and do so in such a way where they can clearly tell it's them. But I'll leave that to your discretion. Sometimes one of the best parts about writing is that it's therapeutic. So if you do have someone in your life who, for whatever reason, you don't like or um, you want to get something out and you, you don't want to do it in real life, write about it. Um, these are the characters you can kill off. With all of that said, uh, I want to go back and give a really overarching piece of advice in knowing who is who in your book, right? So you should have one protagonist, uh, maybe two, you know, again, should have known I did too, but I, I wrote this in a very specific way where the dichotomy was necessary. Um, but you should definitely know who your protagonist is. If you're not familiar with the word, your protagonist is your main character. This is the person that hopefully your readers are rooting for to succeed. They are the person whose journey we're following. Um, you should have an antagonist or antagonists, which are the folks who are out there trying to play spoiler for your main character. There are going to be other supporting characters 
who don't necessarily play any key role. Your, your reader doesn't necessarily have to like them, love them, hate them. They're usually there to further your plot, to push it forward, to provide support for your main characters, um, roadblocks for your main characters. But key things to note here, your protagonist has to have some type of redeeming quality. And by that, I mean, your reader has to, in some way, shape, or form, want this person to be successful at the end. If your reader is rooting against them the entire time uh, and they succeed, you didn't do a very good job. Uh, if your re reader is rooting against them the entire time and you have them fail, that would be an interesting take on the, the generally accepted story flow, which is adapted from the hero's journey, where they follow this cycle of you know, overcoming adversity, getting to the top of the mountain and ultimately succeeding. So I personally don't mind reading a book where the protagonist fails, uh, but just keep in mind as a writer, especially if you're a newer writer, it's going to take a lot of skill and tact and, and writing um, devices to make that palatable to your reader to get to the end and find out your main character didn't achieve the mission. Now, you may also have a sequel in mind. So that's a whole other topic for a whole other podcast. Um, want to also point out for anyone that's not your protagonist or antagonist, a main focal point in your writing, don't go overboard with the descriptions and the backstories unless it's completely relevant to driving your story forward. You should not be giving supporting characters, ancillary characters, characters who are appearing once or twice in a 350 page novel as much attention as you're giving your main characters. It's really confusing to the reader and they start to think that there's an ulterior motive there. They may start thinking your characters are more important than they're going to be. And that's just going to set them up for disappointment when they get to the end and find out that they never found that character, that character never came back. Um, also, same thing with the number of characters. Unless it's absolutely necessary, there's no need to have so many supporting characters. You know, if you're writing a football book, um, you know, may, you know, probably don't need to mention all 40 something players on a football team. You're going to focus your main character is going to be whatever position player uh, your supporting characters will be the ones that they interact with the most, but you're not going to name every single player on that team and dive into their backstory. At least I hope you're not, uh, because I, I can't imagine how you would fit that into a book and how your reader's even going to keep track. Um, you can also keep in mind that you, as the character, when you insert yourself get to dictate things that you didn't in your own life um, and really lay it out there for your reader in a way that they don't know it's you. So you get to vicariously live through your characters. And sometimes I think that that really helps move the plot along. If you're stuck um, and you didn't plan on being a character in your story, insert yourself into any of the characters at any point and say, hey, what would I do from here? Or if I was this person, what would I do from here? That really gives an interesting perspective to not just coming up with the first thing that pops in your head, because even though you're writing fiction, you need it to be believable to some degree for your reader. Um, if a character does something that's totally off base with anything any logical person would do in a situation, again, unless there's a reason it happened, like they're on some, under some type of spell um, or they're under some type of duress, you're going to lose interest from your readers really quickly. So I'm going to start pulling this all together. And I'm going to use an example of a, a project that's kind of a pet project I've been working on forever because it's just way too complicated with my other writing endeavors to focus on. But it involves 13 main characters, but it's also a 13 book series. So each of these characters have been extensively plotted out um, in terms of their backstory, um, you know, where they come from culturally, religiously, their appearance, their, their mannerisms, and they each have a very specific client profile. Um, we have some worksheets on this 
that we use in our coaching. So if you are curious to get a peek into how you can start doing this for each of your characters, feel free to reach out. Uh, we'd love to set up a quick call and talk to you a little bit more about how we help our authors put together these descriptions. Um, you know, think of it in terms of like a baseball card or um, an actor's profile. It's all of the information you need, even like a dating profile uh, about the character, where if you were to show that card to somebody, they could get a glimpse of how that character is going to act. Um, planning is the best way to not write yourself to an ending and then find out you can't put it all together. And planning will save you a whole lot of heartache in the end. Again, even if you're a pantser, uh, by all means, start writing things out, start letting your characters live in the moment. But at some point, take a step back and make sure that everything aligns with the goal and the vision that you had, not just for your storyline, but so that your characters are true to what you expected and that they're showing some type of growth. Um, there is there is something there that a reader is going to enjoy reading, especially if you folks that are planning on doing, you know, multi-book series or having your character become a recurring character. Um, there's no quicker way to kill a series than to make sure that your readers don't like your character or feel like that they're not growing and learning. Uh, there's no reason they're going to want to read the next book if they weren't satisfied with the first book. So I hope that helps you all. Um, again, feel free to write into the show, drop us a comment, let us know what topics you'd like us to cover um, as it pertains to struggles that you may be encountering in the writing process. You've just spent this time listening to the Pen Podcast with Matt Harms. Look forward to catching you all in the next episode.